Work creation days 24 hours long or 1,000 years long? Well, one often misused scripture often cited in an attempt to support the day equals a thousand years for creation is Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8, where it says, but, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the, with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So right away when people see that, they say, well, that's perfect. That's the formula. If a day with the Lord is as a thousand years, then each day of creation is not a 24-hour period, but it's a thousand years. Well, let's go back and look at that real quick. You'll notice that the subject is God's long-suffering. And we're going to see here in, um, in verse 2 here, or verse 9, I'm sorry, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All right, so the, the topic there isn't, um, you know, it, it isn't a prophetic formula, if you would. It, it, it's simply saying, that God is so long-suffering that he will wait and wait and wait in order to try to save as many souls as he can. He's not impatient when it comes to that. Um, you know, so, you know, to, and God views time differently than we do. But we can't take that as a prophetic formula and say that each day of creation is a thousand years because of God because of that verse, because that verse only has to do with God's patience. He is long suffering. All right. But there's more to this. There's, there's another way to document this as well, that, uh, well, first of all, I just want to say, I believe that each creation day was a 24 hour period. And there's one way to prove that the thousand year theory doesn't add up, it doesn't work. And that's by the um, age of Adam. Let's take a look at this. Well, first, actually, before I take before we take a look at Adam's age, I do want to say yeah, there is a scripture where God does give a prophetic formula because many people might be saying right away, well, in, in Ezekiel's time, there was an instance where a day equaled a year. Let's Let's look at that because that is true. And um, Ezekiel chapter 4, um, verse 4, I'll start up here. He says to Ezekiel, Lie upon thy left side and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. According to the number of days, thou shalt lie upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of days. 390 days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. Now here's what I came here for. I have appointed thee each day for a year. All right. So back in Ezekiel's time, God was telling him to lay on his left side for this many days, on his right for that many days, and each day was going to equal a year that um, that God's people were going to go into captivity. Um, so that, but that's different. That that was a prophetic formula. It wasn't a day equals a thousand years, but each day equaled a year there. So that's not unheard of. It's not. It's not like it's ridiculous. Um, so, but let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 real quick here. And um, we're going to find out at the end of the sixth day there in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 that God saw everything that he made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So at the end of the sixth day, now this is important because Adam was created on the sixth day. 
But at the end of the sixth day, everything was good. All right, the the fall of man did not happen yet. Adam and Eve had not partaken of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And uh, everything was good. So now what we're going to do is go look and see how long Adam lived. Because if he lives past the sixth day, um, then he would be over a thousand years old. And I'll explain that in a, in a moment here. But let's go to the scripture um, real quick here. Genesis chapter 5, verse 5, and it says, And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. All right? So right away we know that Adam could not have lived past 930 years. So if each day was a thousand years, by the, since Adam was created on the sixth day, by the time you got to the uh, beginning of the seventh day when God rested and it appeared as though the fall had not happened yet, um, Adam would have been a thousand years old already. And then at the beginning of the eighth day, so to speak, or after the day of rest, um, Adam would have been 2,000 years old if a day equaled a thousand years for creation. So I think that's a pretty strong case right there, but I think even another um, Another thing that really shores this up is that um, we're going to see in the, in the bidding, each day was divided by the light and darkness. In Genesis 1 verse 3, and it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening, now check this out, the evening and the morning were the first day. So we see there that when it got light, then, you know, the division between days was light and dark. And there was that period. So and that's what happens today when it gets... Uh, the, you know, it changes days. You know, we see the sun up, sun down. I know back there, the, the sun, the physical sun was, was not yet created. But at the beginning of the fourth day, the sun and the moon and the stars were all there. And each day was divided by sunrise and sunset, um, by light and darkness, day and night. Now, that couldn't happen with a thousand year period. I mean, what... If a day equaled a thousand years in creation, what would have been that dividing part? There, there, there isn't anything that's logical. There isn't any light and dark that happens every thousand years. Um, in, in other words, that the sun comes up every day. It does every tw approximately every twenty-four hours, not every um, thousand years. Um, so. Anyways, hey, I think that's a, a, there's a lot of evidence there for that. I mean, we could continue on. We could read, um, you know, um, there you go. The uh, I'll pull it up here. At the end of the third day, and the evening, evening and the morning were the third day. And then you go on. Um, now, he, he put lights in the firmament of heaven to give uh, light upon the earth. Um and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good. Now here, here it is again. And the evening, darkness, and the morning were the first day. And it appears as though the, uh, the darkness actually starts the day because um, in the beginning, at, in the beginning of creation, there was darkness. And that was the beginning um, of the day. So we could go we could go on and read more of that, but um, I just wanted to share that one uh, little tidbit with you. I thought it was fascinating that um, according if you looked at and if if you look to see how long Adam lived, this day equals a thousand year theory for creation um, is is very weak and it seems to be virtually impossible um, impossible to prove be again between Adams between the years that Adam lived and the fact that each day was divided by sun up and sun down or light up and light down. Um, hey, I hope you enjoyed that. 
Be sure to join us every Monday for our line by line studies live. You can ask us uh, questions and comments during our broadcast and we'll answer them at the end. And on Thursdays at 7.30 p.m. Central Time, we do a live Bible discussion where we, uh, where we can even take your phone calls and or uh, comments in the live chat box. So, um, hey, stay in God's word every single day so that you can be a Christian overcomer.